Hi everyone, uh, not so long ago I got a Hasselblad 500C camera and I've been wanting to do a review of this camera for quite a while but uh, there's been so many that have come before me and people that have probably used this camera I know it's much better than I do that I uh, wanted at least to have some time uh, before I jumped in and tried to do some basic coverage. Um, so please be kind in the comments and uh, if you have any questions or things that I've missed um, let me know and I'll try to add them or answer your questions later. So basically these cameras were designed by Victor Hasselblad in I believe 50s and uh, they are probably one of the most recognizable brands and shapes um, for a camera and for many many years they were uh, the go-to camera of professionals in a medium format world. Um, Basically why this camera I think is so exciting is that it's a completely modular system so everything pretty much off this camera comes off can be replaced or it can be something else can be put in its place. If you want to take the lens off there is a button right down here you press and you just twist a little bit to the left and the lens comes right off so that's one thing that definitely is modular as you would expect. Next thing that's um, also modular is this winder. If you press a button at the very top here and then just uh, um, move a little bit to the left it also comes off and you can put a different type of winder on it the one with the handle or maybe with the one with the light meter uh, different other ones as well um, then if you rotate the camera and keep looking around you're gonna see a film back um, which is also obviously detachable so here um, if you move this little number 12 just a little bit to the right it will actually let you take that off and then over here on the top you have the um, viewfinder which can also be replaced by a prism viewer so that comes off and in this late 500c model and also I believe later in a 500c model you could also press these little tabs and release the uh, um, this viewer here that can also be replaced by different other styles depending on what is it that you want to do. So what you end up with is this uh, box <laughs> that has a mirror inside of it and everything else is replaceable. So I will not put this back. I'll try to assemble it back together so it resembles the Hasselblad again. Hopefully this goes on pretty easy. Okay. Um, the shutter is in the lens so there's a little um, kind of a screw shape thing right here that is a female part and if you look over here there is a corresponding male part and when you put the lens back on that actually cocks the shutter and when you release the trigger then it fires the shutter inside the lens. This particular lens I have here is a Carl Zeiss Planar 2.880 T-Star lens awesome lens probably one of the most classic designs that many people love to use I certainly do um, 80 millimeter on a 6x6 uh, medium format camera is usually somewhere around 50 or so millimeter on your 35 millimeter equivalent so basically a standard lens <clears throat> so I'm gonna put the lens back on and the way you do that is uh, you look at this uh, red dot here I think you align that to the top, you just rotate to the right and you're in business. Now I'm going to talk about the lens a little bit even though I don't want to really make this about the lens. As you can see here um, the apertures are selectable in the second ring, the shutters are selectable in the top ring and you can actually by pressing this button here move the shutter and the aperture together. Um, what does that mean? Well if you actually use a light meter and you use the EV values on the light meter you can actually set this camera using the EV value that the meter shows you so let's say in particular case if the meter read 11 for the EV value you come here and you set that and then automatically when you look up here you can see that the corresponding combination is f56 at a 60th of a second but you can also by pressing this button then select to for instance have f2.8 with 250th of a second or you can go all the way over here and choose to shoot with a 20 f22 with one fourth exposure so I think that's pretty handy besides that you can move the shutter by itself 
and over here you can go to bulb mode which allows you to um, run it for as long as you want using the shutter release button that's pretty much all that i want to say about that right now uh, there's a few more functions you can read about yourself for the lens that you have um, here you have a focus ring and you also have a depth of field scale which comes in very handy a lot of times when i shoot a landscape if i'm at f16 i will actually just move this to infinity uh, to match f16 and then reading f16 here i can see that everything from about 12 meters to infinity uh, sorry 12 feet to infinity will be sharp um, if i want everything from let's say five feet to be sharp and then i obviously see that my depth of field with f16 ends somewhere around eight feet so that's definitely a concern with a medium format camera because you don't get the kind of depth of field that you sometimes would expect from you know, or that you get from a let's say a micro four thirds camera or something like that um as far as the film backs go um they're kind of a science in on into themselves there are basically at least two types this is the newer type film back um, it has a dark slide that protects the camera from taking a sh uh, protects the film basically from being exposed without it being properly on the camera and it also um, needs to be taken out when you take a picture so let me just show you so basically if you have this on and you would like to take a photograph you actually take have to take the dark slide out just like with most other medium format cameras that are of this style or design um, so if you want to take the, the magazine off you have to put the dark slide in again to protect the film so that's what that's for um, if you flip this up and rotate it counterclockwise and pull out the cassette will come out and um, your spool from your previous film will be here and the way you load it is you move it over to this side and now you put your new film here and you thread it across this way there's a little cool system here that keeps the film down as you're trying to wind it onto the take-up spool so the way you activate that is you spin this wheel up and that actually lets the film slide in there and then you lock it again and then you put the film in here you wind it make sure that the line on the film correlates to this red line here and then when you're done with that process you take this back inside like sorry I have this backwards like this you spin this back close it and you start winding the film until the internally set mechanism is set and even though it's empty now it shows that we are on the first shot which is presented as number one here and it also shows that a um, little window here has a white colored uh, light I guess or uh, color in there that means that it's ready to take a photograph so in order for the body to be ready it also has an indicator here that has to be white if you have white on the cassette on the magazine and you have a white on the body then you'll be able to take your first picture okay so let's pretend that we have film in so I will put this carefully back in there and also do not slam this and actually push this number 12 over to the right put the cassette in there like it should be oops I have something in my way okay push it back put it in there and the release and that's caught now it's cocked ready to go so your shutter release is right here and now when I press it you'll hear the marvelous Hasselblad sound no, maybe not well, I know not because this always happens to everybody the dark slide is in so we take that out but obviously at the same time it's showing you how dark slide does protect you from taking a shot when you shouldn't or don't want to okay so the picture has now been taken you wind it you're ready for your next shot this turns to number two and things are good let's say you take this off and you want to use another magazine with a different type of film and you fire your camera without the magazine being attached now you have a white on the magazine and you have a red on the body if you do the same steps as before take the dark slide out try to take a picture it won't let you 
the only way to remedy that situation is to put the dark slide back in, take the magazine off, wind the camera so it's white, put your slide back, put your cassette back on, take the dark slide out, and you can take that picture again. Also, another thing that I wanted to show you quick wise is that there is an older style slot magazine. Uh, this is the A12 magazine that was, I believe, closer to the original time when the camera was introduced. And it opens up the same way you open this up, twist and pull out. Um, you also take your take up spool over to this side you basically thread the film the same way you would in the other one. You start here, you raise this little guy up, you push the film under it, you put it over on this side, um, and now you pull a little bit, you put it back in, and after you close this, which takes a little bit of work, you actually open up this little window and you look in there while at the same time on the opposite side of where your cassette comes out you have this little other guy that can be erased and so you start, there's a little arrow there, you start in the direction of the arrow which is film direction, um, or I mean, sorry, clock direction you keep spinning, 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 spinning until you see number one in there once you see number one in there then you know your film is properly cued and in order to give this little guy a hint that you are now at number one, you actually rotate this counterclockwise like so. And you saw this little thing turn to one, this turn to white. And basically from here on out, it functions like the other film winder. So let's see how that works. We can take this guy off. Ah, ah the dark slide isn't in there. I always forget that. Take that off. Put this one on. Take the dark slide out. Both are on one. You can take a picture, take your next picture, and so on. So there are many accessories you can get with this camera. Like for instance, you can have a different type of viewfinder that doesn't flip the image over. You can have a 24, A24 um, for 220 film that basically has 22 shots. I even think there's a um, like six by four five type of magazine that you can use also I don't use any of those I like it the way it is over here on the other side um, there's little slots in here that there are some accessories that can fit in that um, and the only other thing I want to show you is uh, if I remember this right I don't use it much your shutter is ready to go um, and to take that picture when it's cocked as it is now but if you pu push this down here oops that's not right oh I know it actually holds the shutter open until you release it again so let's try this again pull this over press it it actually holds it open until you let go of that no it does not I'm sure there's some practical use for that but in the year or half a year that I own this camera I still haven't had to use it so um, you can read more about it elsewhere if you're interested um, I think that's about it. So one of the most beautiful cameras around for sure. Um, makes awesome medium format pictures. And I hope you enjoy it.